today's class of gross anatomy after the completion of the arteries of the upper limb that is the subclavian artery we are into the next artery that is called as the axillary artery the axillary artery is the main artery of the upper limb it begins from the outer border of the first rib as the continuation of the subclavian artery and ends up at the lower border of the teres major muscle where it continues as the brachial artery for example if you see the course of the axillary artery in the axilla in the middle of the axilla it is crossed by the pectoralis minor muscle so because it is crossed by the pectoralis minor muscle anteriorly this artery has been divided into three parts that is the first part of the artery which is called as superior or proximal to the muscle and the second part of the axillary artery is posterior to the pectoralis minor muscle and the third part of the axillary artery is distal or posterior to the pectoralis minor muscle the axillary artery while it is passing through the axilla it generally runs over the lateral wall but it is more closer to the anterior wall than the posterior wall so here we must know that the axillary artery has been divided totally into three parts by the pectoralis minor muscle so if you see the overall relations of the axillary artery in the axilla so medially it is enter its course it is related to the axillary vein but the course of the brachial plexus and the branches of the brachial plexus are different in each part of the axillary artery here each part of the axillary artery gives off different branches the first part of the axillary artery gives off one branch second part gives off two branches and the third part of the axillary artery gives off three branches now let us see the relations of the axillary artery of each part in detail first let us discuss about the relations of the first part of the axillary artery in the first part of the axillary artery anterior relations are the pectoralis major muscle that is the clavicular part of the pectoralis major muscle and anteriorly it is related to the loop of nerves communicating between the lateral and the medial pectoral nerves so what are the anterior relations here anterior relations of the first part of the axillary artery are the clavicular part of the pectoralis major muscle and the nerve loop communicating between the medial pectoral and the lateral pectoral nerves next let us see what are the relations posteriorly that is the posterior relations of the first part of the axillary artery so in the posterior aspect it is related to the medial cord of the brachial plexus not only that posteriorly we have other two structures one is the long thoracic nerve and the first digitation of the serratus anterior muscle so these three are the posterior relations so what are the three posterior relations of the first part of the axillary artery it is related posteriorly to the medial cord of the brachial plexus next is the long thoracic nerve and next is the first digitation of the serratus anterior muscle after knowing the posterior relations let's discuss about the medial relations of the first part of the axillary artery medially it is related to the axillary vein because i already mentioned you that in its entire course the medial relation is the axillary vein so medially it is related to the axillary vein and laterally it is related to the posterior as well as the lateral cord of the brachial plexus so by this we completed the anterior posterior medial and lateral relations of the first part of the axillary artery after knowing the relations of the first part of the axillary artery now let us see what are the relations of the second part we all know that the pectoralis minor muscle is separating the ax or dividing the axillary artery into three parts so anteriorly the second part is related to the pectoralis minor muscle and posteriorly it is related to the posterior cord of the brachial plexus and subscapularis muscle 
So you should remember a very important point here that the relations of the second part of the axillary artery is very, very important because it is related to the cause of the brachial plexus. Example, I will tell you. You know the what, what are the anterior relations? That is anteriorly it is related to the pectoralis minor. Posteriorly it is related to the posterior cord of the brachial plexus and the subscapularis muscle. Laterally it is related to the lateral cord of the brachial plexus and medially it is related to the medial cord of the brachial plexus along with the axillary vein. At last, let us see what are the relations of the third part of the axillary artery. Let us see the anterior relations first. The anterior relations are the medial root of the median nerve and the posterior relations are the axillary nerve, the radial nerve and the subscapularis in its upper part and the teres major in its lower part. Now let us see what are the medial relations. The medial relations as usual the axillary vein along with the axillary vein the medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm. So here we discuss the anterior relations, posterior relations, medial relations and laterally it is related to the musculocutaneous nerve. After knowing the relations of the each part of the axillary artery in detail, now let us concentrate on each branch of the axillary artery. As I already mentioned you that the first part of the artery gives of one branch, second part gives of two branches and the third part gives of three branches. Now I am going to explain you about the first branch arising from the first part of the axillary artery which is called as the superior thoracic artery. So you can see the superior thoracic artery here. This superior thoracic artery is a very small branch and this superior thoracic artery arises immediately below the clavicular part of the subclavius muscle which runs downwards in between the pectoralis major as well as minor muscles where it supply these two muscles and ends up by supplying the medial wall of the axilla. After studying the superior thoracic artery which is the branch of the first part of the axillary artery. Now I am going to explain about another two branches which are arising from the second part of the axillary artery. They are the thoracoacromial artery and the second one is the lateral thoracic artery. Let us discuss about these two arteries in detail. First I am going to explain about the thoracoacromial artery. You can see here the thoracoacromial artery is arising from the upper border or the superior aspect of the pectoralis minor muscle. Immediately after it arises from the upper border of the pectoralis minor muscle, it pierces clavipectoral fascia. After piercing clavipectoral fascia, the artery divides into four perpendicular branches. The four perpendicular branches are the deltoid branch, clavicular branch, acromion branch and the pectoral branch. So these four branches supplies to their respective regions. For example, the deltoid branch supplies the deltoid, finally it ends up by supplying the acromion process or the coracoacromial joint and the pectoral branch supplies the pectoral region that is the superficial aspect of the pectoral region, the clavicular branch supplies the clavicle and finally the acromion branch ends up by anastomosing at the coracoacromial joint. After knowing the thoracoacromial artery, now let us see the second branch which is arising from the second part of the axillary artery which is called as the lateral thoracic artery. This lateral thoracic artery arises from the inferior border of the pectoralis minor muscle where it runs along the serratus anterior muscle and supplies the pectoralis major as well as pectoralis minor muscles and also supplies the serratus anterior muscle. But in females this lateral thoracic artery is larger and it forms an important blood supply over the lateral aspect of the mammary gland through its lateral mammary branches. After knowing the branches which are arising from the first and second part of the axillary artery. Now let us see what are the branches which are arising from the third part of the axillary artery. The third part of the axillary artery totally gives of three branches. One is the subscapular artery, second one is the posterior circumflex humeral artery and the third one is anterior circumflex humeral artery. Now let us take these arteries in detail. 
First is the subscapular artery. This subscapular artery is the largest branch of the axillary artery. It arises from the lower border of the subscapularis muscle and finally ends up at the inferior angle of the scapula where it passes through the upper intermuscular space that is the upper triangular intermuscular space. After passing through this upper triangular intermuscular space, it winds around the lateral border of the scapula. After winding around the lateral border of the scapula, it reaches the infraspinous fossa and finally ends up by dividing into numerous branches. The second branch is the anterior circumflex humeral artery. This anterior circumflex humeral artery winds around the anterior aspect of the surgical neck. So after it is winding around the anterior aspect of the surgical neck, it runs posteriorly where it anastomos with the posterior circumflex humeral artery finally to form the arterial circle around the surgical neck. So here anteriorly the anterior circumflex humeral artery gives off an ascending branch called as the ascending branch of anterior circumflex humeral artery which runs along the intertubercular sulcus finally it supplies the shoulder joint. At last we are going to discuss about the third branch of the third part of the axillary artery which is the posterior circumflex humeral artery. This posterior circumflex humeral artery passes along with the axillary nerve through the quadrangular space to reach the posterior aspect of the surgical neck where it crosses the posterior aspect of the surgical neck by winding around the surgical neck and finally anastomose with the anterior circumflex humeral artery and here it gives off a branch to supply the deltoid as well as the shoulder joint. So here finally we discussed in detail about the axillary artery, its course and finally all the branches of the first, second as well as the third part of the axillary artery in detail. Finally we completed the axillary artery anatomy in detail along with its course, branches as well as the relations.